Hello, you are welcome to Ministry Conversations. I'm Yomi Olufiade, and in this video, I want to discuss programming yourself to last. By way of an introduction, I read the story of a young man years back. His name is Robert Murray McCain. He was a Scottish preacher and missionary. On his deathbed at age 29, he was a victim of burnout. He said something very profound. He said, and I quote, he said, God gave me a message to deliver and a horse to ride. I have killed the horse and now I cannot deliver the message. This impacted me so much. I was an undergraduate then that I decided, Lord, I do not want to shine. I want to last. My goal in life and ministry is to be around here very much effective in ministry for a very long while to come. If Jesus studies, it's my desire to see my great grandchildren. I desire so much, not just to be a successful minister of the gospel, but to be a successful husband to my wife and to be a loving father to my three children. Why am I saying this? In the long run, how effective I am in serving the kingdom of God is to be measured not so much by how much I started. It's not going to be measured not by so much of how much accolades I gather as a human being, but it's going to matter how effective I am for the kingdom of God and for how long I am able to do that. See, church history is littered with a lot of examples of people ministers men women highly anointed powerful people who made a shipwreck of their lives and ministry because of a faulty approach some their lives were cut off too early they couldn't stay around for far too long some were around for long but their ministries were wrecked by scandals sexual scandals financial scandals and different stuff like that so i want to commit to your thoughts and I want you to stay with me. If I'm not able to finish in this first installment, I'm going to take it a little further in another installment. I trust that the Lord will make this to be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Number one, I want to commit to your thought. Please guard your health. Your body is the vehicle that carries the anointing. Oh, I understand you are a man of the spirit. You are a woman of the spirit. You pray in the spirit. You fast. You pray. But a lot of people destroyed their bodies and they became ineffective in their service to the kingdom of God. I want to challenge you. Eat healthy. Live healthy. Exercise. Take rest. It is not a simple thing for you to go on vacations. Listen, the work of God never finishes. To the glory of God, I spent about 20 years in ministry, full-time ministry right now, and I've discovered there is still so much ground to discover. Souls have been perishing before I entered the ministry, and long after I would have left this sin, souls will still be perishing. So I want to encourage you, dear man of God, learn to take times off. You are, The kingdom of God is not about you alone. Do everything possible to live healthy. Visit the doctor. Conduct regular checkups. Science and medicine is not anti-faith. Watch what you eat. A lot of people die in installments by virtue of the things they eat. I am trusting the Holy Spirit that He will give you wisdom. Seek the advice of medical professionals and let them help you to maximize your body and your health so that your ministry can be as effective and we can and you can be a blessing to as many people as possible number two thing i want to deliver to you is this realize that ministry is a marathon not a sprint relax i like to say that to a lot of ministers of the gospel relax you cannot finish the work of god i'm going to say it again you cannot finish the work of god learn to pace yourself what you cannot do or what you cannot achieve today you will do tomorrow yeah what you can't do today you will do tomorrow 
Learn to run your own race. Do not compare yourself to fellow ministers. Do not compete with other ministers. There are a lot of people. Um, I One of the things I enjoy studying is church history. I like to read the history of, of ministries, of ministers. And I have discovered that a lot of people have made a shipwreck of ministry simply because of a spirit of unhealthy competition. You can be challenged by what God is doing in another man's ministry, but let not another person's ministry be your yardstick. There is a scripture I want to read to us. I know we know that. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Paul the apostle said, he said, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. He said, But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. He said, but we will not boast of things without our measure. But according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. He said, for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. Praise God. Paul said, we do not stretch ourselves beyond our measure. Understand your measure. Are you called as a pastor? Be content with being a pastor. Are you called as an evangelist? Be content being an evangelist. If you are called as a trainer, as, as a theologian, whatever it is your peculiar call, you need to understand clearly the terms of your assignment from God and stick with it. When you know it, you will develop security in yourself. All these, my church is bigger than yours. My ministry is bigger than your ministry and things like that it frustrates the grace of god upon a man's life so i want to encourage you understand your measure and magnify your office celebrate yourself celebrate what god is doing in your ministry okay be challenged by what god is doing somewhere else but don't let that become the yardstick and then you begin to race oh somebody has gotten this car I also i'm going to get this car somebody has built a church of this size an auditorium of this size and that's what i'm going to do oh their budget for missions is a million dollars i i, I to i must get a million dollars be challenged but do not run another man's race i trust that the lord will bless you a lot of people made a mess of ministry because they got into competition with other ministers of the gospel number three avoid pride pride is the is the primary sin is the original sin i like to put it this way that pride is the sin that has the capability of turning angels into devils if you remember lucifer in the bible you get an understanding of what i'm saying learn to be humble learn to be teachable learn to be accountable being, being humble means that you and i we we are teachable we are open to other people's ideas see many people lost relevance in ministry because they are not teachable they are not they are not they are not they are, they are prideful they are not humble i want to challenge you keep learning learn to learn from other people don't become a dinosaur in ministry i was impacted one day i was listening to joyce mayer and she was sharing how her ministry went to another level when she learned to listen to her first son who was serving with her in ministry you know the the young man was giving some advice and initially she said her reaction was look i'm the founder of this ministry i'm the one god called i'm the one god spoke to when were you born that you giving me advice he said but she found out that things got stuck and at the time she was praying the holy spirit said go and listen to your son that's the solution i have for you so i want to challenge us don't become a dinosaur in ministry adapt to changing seasons learn how to reinvent yourself listen the message does not change. The message is eternal, but the methods must of a necessity change. We must learn to adapt to changing times and seasons. Ministry is not about you. When you understand this, you cannot be proud. When you understand that ministry is not all about you, it's about the kingdom of God. It's about the body of Christ. That we are called to lead a ministry does not mean we are the most anointed. It does not mean that we are the wisest of all men let us avoid pride the lord bless us in jesus name and finally i like to say this let us be aware of the devil's tactics it has not changed 
from time immemorial it has been sexual temptation financial impropriety and pride the attitude of ascribing the glory of god to herself you remember the three g's i know you know that the girls the gold and the glory women wealth and winning the females the fortune and the fame i want to challenge you man of god woman of god if you are married please cultivate your marriage we've had enough stories of people messing up here and there we've had enough stories of sexual scandals and i pray that you will not be part of the statistics in jesus name please cultivate your marriage do not remove boundaries okay do not remove boundaries stop saying it does not matter you flirt you do all of this and you say it does not count it counts their brothers and sisters i want to encourage you check greed check inordinate ambition it is my prayer for you that you will not just be in ministry but you will make your mark in closing I like to read the book of Hebrews chapter 12 for your consideration the Bible said Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 he said we are foreseeing that we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest you be wearied and faint in your your minds it is my prayer for you that you will fulfill your ministry the lord bless you dear servant of god god bless you in jesus name